This is Rebecca Jernigan, your tour guide into discoveries, coming to you live from the heart of America to around the globe via the World Wide Web, satellite, and podcast. Let's journey together into the realms of the known to the unknown in search of enlightenment, knowledge, and truth. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this beautiful planet Earth. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you are listening to Journeys with Rebecca right here on WolfSpiritRadio.com and also on Revolution Radio at FreedomSlips.com in Studio B. Please do remember that both stations, Wolf Spirit Radio and Freedom Slips, are totally listener-supported, so any donations really make a difference. Difference. It allows all the wonderful show hosts and their guests to continue to provide the best and the up. You'll find that on the left hand column of each page that you visit. And still doing some updates on it. I will be working this week and next week uh, making some additional changes to the website. Uh, so please do be sure to check in and I will be sending out a newsletter sometime next week with the guests that will be coming up for July. I cannot believe it's already June is almost over and July is almost upon us. I have an absolutely fabulous guest tonight. And I have to tell you is that this wonderful lady... Uh, interviewed me for, she has two different shows. We'll be talking about that in just a moment. And uh, I have to say, I was a, a guest on her two different radio shows that she does. And I have just, can honestly say, I don't think I've ever been interviewed uh, by somebody so as eloquent and uh, so informed as this guest is. Uh, many of you are already familiar with her. Her name is Solaris Blue Raven. She is a published author, public speaker, a timeline astrologer, MT healer, a remote viewer, clairvoyant, and an assessment specialist in psychotronic warfare, synthetic telepathy, and covert technology. That's a lot about what we're going to be covering tonight, but she's also a world-class natural psychic and a cosmic advisor. Uh, Ms. Blue Raven has been a test pilot for covert technology and has a professional background in surveillance she investigates global anomalies in addition to her current research. Her expertise in artificial intelligence interfaces, interface is well respected in the scientific and mystical community. She is also a professional writer. This woman is just busy. She writes, uh, she has several books on covert technology. Uh, we're going to have her get into those during the course of the show, as well as a DVD documentary called Eye of the Remote, A Disclosure of Covert Technology. It's also available. We're going to have her share with us tonight where we can get that rest of that information. Um, she is also a producer, director, and founder of Raven Star Films and Night Shadow Anomaly Detectives. She is also a public speaker and a specialist in covert technology regarding AI and synthetic telepathy. Um, she is, offers also workshops on ascension, ascension, DNA activation, spiritual Spirituality, um, psychic protection, Atlantean crystal healing, and more. She also offers classes on energetic healing. She's a gifted, she is a certified master teacher in an array of healing systems. She's also a certified black belt instructor. Interesting background with this woman. Uh, Miss Blue Raven has also a professional background and is trained off world with a universal approach to navigating on timelines in the earth realm. 
Uh, her radio shows, which I spoke to you about, is Raven Star's Witching Hour is every Saturday at 12 p.m. midnight on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, Studio A, and also on Hyperspace on KCOR Digital Radio Network, Friday nights, 12 midnight. Um, and that's on Eastern Standard Time is 9 p.m. Pacific Time. So that's saying a mouthful for all of this, and I want to welcome Solaris to the show. Welcome, Solaris. Well, thank you very much, Rebecca. Uh, you, you could have uh, edited that down a little bit, but I know, you know, it's a light. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't edit mine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. I loved it's it. True. It's it's what we are. You know, we're multifaceted. We've been around for a long time, and we're, um, you know, I can speak for not only myself, but a lot of people out there who have a lot of expertise in a lot of areas. Well, you, you know, that is so true. And, you know, we didn't arrive in these years uh, that we have spent on this earth plane with just, you know, sitting back and, and sitting on our thumbs. We've we've acquired a lot of knowledge and uh, we've done a lot of things. Uh, many of us, not just you and not just me, but many people. And as a matter of fact, probably many of them that are listening tonight I have to tell you, Solaris, before we get into everything. Um, uh, when I announced last week that you were going to be the guest course, it's also listed on my website. There were people that were just like, Oh, I just love her. I just love her. So, you know, I'm, I, that you're just very well known and very well loved. I have to tell you very well loved. So okay. I'm, I'm really, really happy to have you here. You and I have had an opportunity to speak a couple times in between the shows and I feel a, an extremely uh, close kindred spirit with you. You're just a fabulous person. Uh, and you're one of those that makes your mark in the world. You've made your mark in the world. You've got many more to make. And you bring changes to people when they listen to what you do and help them as you help them along the way. So for that, my hat's off to you there, Miss Solaris. That's beautiful. Beautiful, thank beautiful. You for those beautiful words, and, and thank you for all the kind thoughts, everybody out there. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be on your show. Rebecca, I have the utmost respect for you, too. So, yeah, we're Star Sisters. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> And listen, yeah. you know, I know as we get into the conversations, I know that, um, Vanessa, by the way, thank you so much for uh, putting this into the um, chat room. But I, I do want to remind people, if you do have questions for Solaris tonight, please do place them in the chat room with all caps so we know that those questions are out there so we can get them answered for you because we have a tendency to move very quickly through topics. We get, um, especially Solaris, I'll get really involved in, in the information so we don't want to, uh, have you miss anything if you have a question on something that's uh, come up during the course of uh, the conversation. So I did want to remind everybody, all caps, please, for sure. And so that being said, let's let's start. The, tonight's show, we talked about a little bit about you talking about your AI and um, about also contactee information. Um, in your in your bio, you talk about your training that you've had. Um, let's start with, with some of that, Solaris. There's a lot of people out there who may not know you yet. They will after this show for sure, uh, because it'll go up. It's being listened to as well on Revolution Radio at the same time. So if they miss you on Revolution Radio, they, they are now going to be able to listen to you. So it's really, it's really awesome for you, everybody that you share this information. So if you could maybe just go into a little bit of the background on how in the world did you get into all this, uh, AI and all this covert psychotronic training and all this stuff how did that come about for you okay well um you have to go back into to the timeline of 2004 and that's when i officially was pulled into a covert program i can uh, i can kind of give you a description of what happened insofar as i sent a book and this is this is about a band obviously called rush um so i sent my book to somebody high profile within that band and within a week's time i had my entire home was under surveillance um i had key logging done onto my computers my phones were getting access and hacked remotely i was having um plants in the area Things started to happen that were very strange as far as uh, I was being closed in on by covert uh, assessment programs and specialists, and, and one of them being Michael J. Mosbach, who literally interconnected me into a program with artificial intelligence life feed real time. And that's with my, with uh, also with Neil Pert, who actually was contracted with him. That, that was his client. So that was Michael's client was Neil. So literally, um, they, they, with, I'll tell you how they process this and how they do it. They map your electromagnetic field and your neural circuitry remotely from your home. They can do it via satellite. They can triangulate you inside your house or wherever you're located. Um, it's not hard to do. As they triangulate you and they, they triangulate and map your electromagnetic field and neural circuitry, they're getting all these benchmarks of your signature, your vibrational frequency and signature, and start to interface and artificial intelligence interface live feed real-time communication system with synthetic telepathy onto the target, and I was the target at the time. So when they opened up the communication live feed real time, 
it's just like everything speeds up very, very quickly. You have artificial telepathy. You have a live feed, real time handler that's there with you. It's not like a computer. This is a real person indoctrinating you into the program. And then it gets later on passed on to an artificial intelligence array system and interface. So that's what happened to me where my life was swept away. I had a great life prior to that. I was um, teaching martial arts as a second degree black belt. I was um, women's state champ kickboxing in the uh, state of Colorado back in the day. I was very, very strong. I was doing, um, you know, I had a great husband. We were land surveyors. I was map making. I was a map maker and also a land surveyor. And I also did healing work. I was doing uh, ascension work, DNA activation, Merkaba work. I wish if anybody knows this, and I know you do, Rebecca, it's, it's really about etheric light master surgery and also clearing away the debris from <clears throat> excuse me, the emotional, mental, physical bodies and preparing light body for higher levels of consciousness. So I was doing all this stuff, but the, the beast behind the screen was literally this this program that literally pulled me into a very dark world of covert intelligence, psychotronic weapons, sci-fi technology, because as they access you, they're, they're brain hacking you to a point where you're being interfaced, life feed real time with your handlers, operators, controllers, and programmers so that you hear and see, and they can hear and see through what you're doing. So it's literally they are there with you animated. It's life feed real time. It's the best size by technology you could possibly have, especially with artificial telepathy, because you don't need radios and headsets. So this is a very good surveillance system, and this is one of the reasons PERT and Mossbach were using it, because it's very good for their covert communication system. You don't need radios. You don't need headsets. It's, a, it's actually a very smooth system. And if you go really deep into the black waters of covert intelligence and sci-spy and beyond Secret Service, you're going to realize very clearly that this is something that's been used for a very long time. Um, why I was pulled into it, I'm not quite certain, other than the fact that I'm a very good candidate for the technology, and I made it look really good for him. And also, later on, I've noticed that DARPA... And all these other divisions are now branching off with artificial intelligence and synthetic telepathy like you know, like you wouldn't believe. So that's kind of a rundown. If you have any other questions, I mean, I can, I can go into further details with it, but that's the rundown of what happened. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the actual, I guess the actual, mm, substance of it. Um, <laughs> because you, you, you know, you were brought into it through, a, through connections that you made. Mm-hmm. Now, in, in your estimation, because I'm listening to you talk about your handlers and things like that, is is that something that would be? Um, I know that AI exists. As a matter of fact, it was very strange last week. Um, by the way, I need to uh, introduce Tobias as well. Tobias is here with us. At least he was. I'm not sure if he's still uh, on the line with us. But Tobias um, was on my show last week. He usually helps me to co-host on occasion. Uh, well, every night that he can, he's usually here. And we were talking about artificial um, intelligence. Uh, one of the things that I'm into is the construct, which is an, it is an artificially uh, produced technology that actually controls um, not only our planet, but also the entire solar system in some sense. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a very different kind of a, it's not, it's the same, but it's very different than what you're talking about. Cause you're talking about, on, you know, it's like, being on the ground, uh, foot soldiering, right? That's what you're, you're Yeah, basically saying. I'm talking about the government sci-spy program. I'm talking about what they do behind the screen with black science departments. Unfortunately, we are star people. That's one of the reasons they were able to triangulate me because of my natural Merkaba signal and my natural wiring for ascension, which is literally about being naturally telepathic, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient. And it's like we get booted up through the technology. So their version of technology hijacks us, interconnects us onto their artificial intelligence array system. And yeah, then all of a sudden we start it's almost like a, a cross bridging between our version of technology, which is ascended, and theirs, which is literally the government black science department. So, yeah. So, okay. So we, we talked a, a little bit about this before, um, you know, in our off time when we, when we weren't on the air. Um, in, when we're talking about these, this AI, and I, I will tell you as I watched a documentary, on, um, oh, I wish I could remember his name. I'm just terrible with people's names. It's wonder I even get through these radio shows to tell you the truth <laughs> with remembering my guest name. But he was actually talking about quantum computing. And this guy was like, I mean, I was watching him. He was just absolutely mesmerizing to the audience. And he was speaking about not only quantum computing, but also about artificial intelligence and that you know, this was the wave of the future. And I mean to tell you, these people were following and falling into this hook, line, and sinker. I mean, you would have thought that, you know, Jesus had arrived again or something with the way um, these people were, were just, you know, grasping everything that he said. And they were just hanging on to it. So these technologies are very much out there. And the reason why we've, we're talking about it tonight is is 
maybe you could break this down for people in, in just everyday scenarios. I mean, you talked about the fact that, you know, um, you're working on ascension, you're working on changing your DNA and your Merkaba and all of that. Well, m- most of the people that are listening to this show are doing the same kind of things. So what we want to do is not only educate them on, on what it is to look for, but also to educate them on how to keep that stuff away from them. And it's not about being fearful. It's about being educated. It's about being stronger than you went through. I mean, just you went through a terrible time. And so you've come out the other side of this, a much stronger person. So maybe with your reflection backwards, you can kind of maybe share some of that information with the audience. I think they would really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. No, I agree with you. Well, I can tell you there's such a dark side to the technology, and I've I'm, I'm been one for – I really enjoy technology. I love artificial intelligence, and I've always been supportive of what I call ascended machine technology, which is what you're talking about with the off-world species, symbiotic interface. But what they do is literally – or after is to hijack your light body and Merkava signal and interface it onto – and I can word it the best way I've heard um, William Henry talk about singularity because it's exactly that. It's a nano suit. It's an interface of their version of transhumanism, which deals with hijacking the light body Merkaba, your natural ascension codes, so they can integrate you into an AI computer system to keep you immortalized in their their false reality. Okay, That is not where we want to go. This is not what we want to do. And for someone like me who loves ascended machines and really enjoys interface the right way, I can tell you, no, it's not the passage. So what I can tell you is that when you're working on yourselves and you're, and it starts with clearing your subtle energy field, obviously, your emotional, your mental, your physical body, you go to levels of detoxification. We follow spirit. We start ascending. We start uh, unraveling all of our past memories simultaneously, past, present, and future. We start going to levels, what we call light body, as you, as you probably know. And as we go through levels of light body, we keep building up our signal. Our Merkava signal gets stronger and stronger and stronger. <clears throat> Excuse me, and that's our vehicle of light. That gets us from one point to the next through consciousness in motion. We don't need a ship. We don't need all these cool little devices that people think we need to open up stargates and portals. We are the device. So that's what happens when you build light body into Merkaba. That's the work I was doing. That's the work I was teaching. And not only was I teaching it, I was doing a, a group where we were grid running each month. And also I had a, a Merkaba signal, which is really powerful. It's what I called it synchronized with what we call the universal celestial heartbeat and pulse. That was my unique signature and frequency, and it was a signal measurable, not by man's version of AI, but by what I call ascended symbiotic machines. And that's um, Merkaba 101. So for people to avoid being interconnected into these projects, first of all, you have to understand that there's a technological beast out there that's very insidious about controlling and manipulating brainwave activity. And as you start to ascend out of the illusion, you start becoming more and more enlightened and, and, and expanded as a consciousness being to a point where you get put on the radar to some degree. Um, I can also tell you that when you start and you're able to access other world realities, multiple world realities, off-world species, or interconnect with your ancestors on a celestial level, you become a threat to some degree. If you can get databases that are based on the full light Akashic, which is what I can do. I'm pretty sure Rebecca does it. I know JP. I mean, probably the listeners. So when you have access to certain things, there is a certain group of people in the illusion of on this terraform rock they call Earth that doesn't appreciate and doesn't want us accessing this because we can break down this matrix and literally allow for everyone on this planet to ascend simultaneously. So they try very, very hard to control, manipulate brainwave activity. If they can't get you through television or, or indoctrination through schools and colleges, they're going to go after you through technology. That's what happened with me, uh, but also because I believe I was a test pilot. So for people who are who, who are concerned or might, um, and it isn't about fear, it's about education, I can honestly tell you, if you feel like you're being put under surveillance or some or somebody surveilling you, I would say, first of all, check your parameters as far as who you have contacts with. Are you around high-profile people? Do you have a clearance? Are you in the military? Do you have family in the military? Did you have family in the military? Any any alphabet agency would, would definitely correlate, or science divisions. Um, a lot of people connected to the science divisions with their family, their children, their grandchildren. All of this correlates also uh, what we call secret societies. We deal with um, Masonic teachings and, and high-ranking Masons. I know that from my lineage that does con- that does connect with the Scottish Rite Masons, high ranking on my mother's side. So I believe that they're looking for a specific bloodline to some degree, but that bloodline deals with a hybrid consciousness and also access to things that they are looking for to to interconnect onto their artificial intelligence database for their own greed. I would say for their own design work, not necessarily for anyone's evolution. So um, things to look out for, literally. Check out who and what you are in contact with from day to day. Um, one of the giveaways as far as being pulled to these projects is you'll start hearing certain things in the atmosphere around you, especially at your home. The first thing that started happening was it, it sounded like a white noise over the house. It almost sounded like a radio was being left on or a television set was being left on. or something. It was like they were doing a sweep over the house. They were doing a sweep, period. So when you start feeling or hearing things, and this isn't about being clairaudient where you're just hearing spirits. This is about a transmission that's mock radio. 
So it's definitely them. It's, it's definitely covert intel or people affiliated with these divisions to some degree. They'll be doing sweeps around the house, and you can check for these things. I mean, you can hear them with your own psychic antenna. And that's another thing, too, Rebecca. We have a psychic antenna that tunes into these things. So not only are we accessing multiple world realities and spirit and consciousness, well, we can plug into their radio stations, too, and it's really not very entertaining. So once again, <laughs> <laughs> when they, inter- they interconnect you back, and I think my biggest problem was I was so good at interfacing, I, I wasn't afraid. And I think they really liked that, the fact that I was able to do what I was doing really quickly. It was very, in my opinion, I think they were very interested in that. So, um, But I would tell you point blank, be aware of this, uh, this stuff because once you get pulled of the project, they start running really intense programs on you. I wouldn't say it's mind control. It's more about um, – it is mind control to some degree, but it's more about an indoctrination programming with, with covert spy technology, at least for me. And also what we call the super soldier program, because everything they, they ran me through was literally a super soldier technology program. And also because of my martial arts background, I think that's what made it work the best. But people out there, you know, keeping your shields up psychically, um, always doing affirmations and shielding. And, and that's not going to protect you from a triangulation if they target you. I will tell you that point blank. You are not going to be protected if they want to triangulate you and puncture a hole through your electromagnetic field with a directed energy weapon. They can do that. Um, what I will say is that make it don't give them a free shot. Make it harder for them. And also don't put yourself on that radar to a point where you're getting pulled into these things. Unfortunately, had I not sent this book to Pert, I would have never been pulled into this project at all. That's what makes me very angry. Um, I would have been left alone. They had no interest in bothering me. I was happily married. I had a great life. I was doing wonderful work. Uh, there was no reason I should have been on the radar. So I don't know if this is too long-winded, but just stop oh, at no. that point. No, okay. no, no, it's it's not it's not too long winded. You're you're giving so much information. It's just it's uh, and it's necessary for for people to hear it. It really is. I mean, not to not to freak people out, but to educate them. Well, and, I think that uh, you have to understand that when, it's not a picnic when you get interface with AI. I don't know why people think they're glorifying this technology. First of all, I see a lot of people out there writing about transhumanism and artificial intelligence, and they have not been interfaced with this program. I have been interfaced with it. I've been talking about this stuff. I testified in 2006 against the parties involved. I had a signals intelligence lawyer, NSA, federal lawyer, shadowing the case. This, the White House was involved. This is a serious issue. And for people out there who are writing about this, they've never, ever, ever danced with artificial intelligence, okay? They don't understand what it does to your brain, how it's capable of not only interfacing you 24 hours a day, but if if they decide they want to flip a switch and make you very sick or flip a switch and try to take you down remotely, they have a remote assassination program. These things are weaponized. This is a weaponized system. It's not a friendly system is my point. You know, the the ascended machines, the symbiotic machines in the cosmos are, are friendly. They are very neutral positive. These things are not. They're engineered by mankind. They're reverse engineered by mankind. They are, their intent is weaponization and warfare. That's all they're used for at SciSpy. Okay, so you just made a comment there that 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 kind of struck me. You said they were they were reverse engineered by mankind. Um, and where do you think that? Do you have any information? Do you have any knowledge of where that actually came from? What what species out there did did they get this from? Do you know? I, well, I would say offhand that, and this is going to sound really abstract, but we are the species that they've been experimenting on for many, many decades. So our DNA is actually hybrid alien DNA, off-world DNA. So when you're dealing with people who are getting pulled into covert programs or military abductions, all of that information that they're accessing on anybody, on a target, has what we call hybrid consciousness, hybrid DNA. So we are the extraterrestrials they seek, bottom line. Uh, when it comes down to certain areas in covert intelligence, we have, uh, I know there are off-world species that have been, I don't want to say encapsulated, but but um, I want to say kind of trapped and stuck to some degree that they've reverse engineered. There are species that they've, they've accessed to some degree that have been here that they've reverse engineered. And I feel a lot of that has been done with um, what we call the, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, templates, not necessarily the real beings themselves. It, it's as if they have samples of technology that they reverse engineered, which has a different kind of uh, symbiotic frequency and transmission to it that they can use for their artificial intelligence, if that makes sense. I'm looking at something that's not um, what people would expect to be seeing, like an extraterrestrial in a physical body, but more as a symbiotic, uh, lucid, fluid kind of, um, I want to say liquid metal. Okay, I, I know it sounds really odd. But things that are literally not not what you would expect to be reverse engineered. Um, things that are literally associated with technology that is not from here that has been reverse engineered, that deals with artificial intelligence and the capabilities associated. But we are the targets. I mean, we are the hybrids. And our minds and our bodies and our spirits are not from here, as you well know, as our consciousness. We are multiversal beings. We are infinite. We are, we are ancient, ancient beings off-world. When we enter onto a timeline here, we bring that database with us. 
We have it within our cells, our atoms. Every aspect of our being is part of that. So all they have to do is interconnect their artificial intelligence onto us, and they start creating this braiding effect where there's a, there's an interface, but it's also like a bleed through. So some of us goes into the machine world or their version, and some of them comes into us. And I know you've touched on this before, um, Rebecca, when we were talking off air some some time ago. But it's it's something like that where we're getting it's a mix. You know, there's a mix going on here. You know, so let's, you, you know, interesting that you, you use the terminology liquid metal. Um, because when we, you, I don't know if anybody remembers the old Terminator movies where they uh, made that being that came back that was like liquid metal and could, you know, just do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they also, in some of the documentaries that they have had about some of the ships that they appear to be like a liquid metal as well. Um, mm-hmm. I have a very real remembrance of coming off of a ship and it was like that the the stairs just kind of liquefied and become solid so that I could step on them. This, them it was a very odd thing and I also had this experience back in the uh, early 90s where um, I, I actually started feeling really really ill and I mean really ill I mean and I was I was feeling you know I haven't shared this this is really interesting so I don't know if it falls into that or not um but i i started feeling extremely heavy like my legs just couldn't couldn't carry me um and in those days i had a, a store and we had a room where we had set up um uh, beds where we could uh have healing uh places for people to come in for reiki treatments or whatever right mm-hmm. and i remember laying down on this on this bed and i was flat on my back and I remember laying there and, and looking at what was going on. I was, you know, kind of remote viewing my own body and my whole body was becoming like this silver color. I mean, it just kept moving and moving and the more it moved up my body and encased me, uh, the harder it was for me to move and to breathe. Um, I got extremely freaked out for a while and then I just started, I really, I had to work really hard because this stuff got up into my, got up as close to my jaw. And that's where I, I stopped it, where it got to my jaw. Um, and I couldn't even move my teeth. I, I was, I was talking through my teeth and I had to have all these people come around and help me and use, use their energy as well to help me, assist me to break free of this metal thing that was just making its way up my body. And wow. to this day, I've always looked at that going, I wonder what would have happened had I have not been able to stop that with the help of my friends and myself, what would have happened? Would I even be here? I've thought about this a yeah. million times. I, I would have said it would have taken you over as, as a host because it sounds to me, it almost reminds me of the movie The Matrix, you know. Um, yeah. And I'm telling you, this sounds, I, and I know the listeners are very savvy, but I'm telling you point blank, there's, there's, there's an invisible force out there, which isn't so invisible, that literally is about frequency and, and modulation of waves and technology. But a lot of those waves are coming from a, a celestial design work that has been hijacked by covert intelligence that's literally using alchemy to some degree. And the alchemy is us. I mean, we are the alchemy, as I said before. The frequencies are alchemy, but also what we are capable of doing. And when you mention those, those type of a liquid metal, I mean, and I've mentioned it also, but that's very um, – that rings true to me. I mean, there's some things that you're talking about that I know very clearly about the magnetic fields that they use that are very hardcore, not gravitational. These are magnetic um, and some other things that they've done where, and, and the jaw too, because that's part of their interface with artificial intelligence, because when they start controlling and manipulating your brain waves and they interface, when the AI gets really close into what I call copying, replicating your brain with a, with an artificial brain, it will basically have a replication, which is almost like a heterodyne program where it will interface onto the natural host, which would be like for me example, for myself. And then it would have an, a replication program interfaced with me. So I have an electronic brain interface, which is, that's even more creepy because that's their version. And and that's where you get cloned copies of personalities and things like that that can be mm-hmm. inserted in. So when when you're talking about controlling the voice, controlling the jaw, that's that's typical of brain hacking. Very typical. I would suspect that they probably tried to get you a few times because I know you're very advanced. I mean, I've talked to you and I'm very grateful that you've been uh, protected because you don't need to be part of that crap. <laughs> that that was I will tell you that was and it's only happened that was the only time that happened like that and it was it was extremely creepified. I mean, um I I have no idea, but it, it seemed like it went on for hours. This it just was weird. It was just so bizarre. 
Um, wow. I'm gonna, I'm, yeah, it was really bizarre. And that's so interesting because when you said that, I was like, oh my God, I, I wonder if this is what that was because all these years I was like, I have said, I've talked to a couple people about it and I was like, everybody's running around scratching their head. I don't know. I'm like, I don't either. I don't understand what that was. So it sounds like to me that maybe that was something that was going on. And yeah, that's not mm-hmm. the first time something has happened, but it certainly was never, that was the only time that kind of a thing ever happened but wow we 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 have a fantastic question here is there a technology developed that will disable ai tech on earth now or in the future you know i've been working on a lot of different things because of what happened to me and i can tell you that you can use radionics you can use different technologies to broadcast out certain transmissions and frequencies but and tesla's coil tesla coils work really well too but the bottom line is when it gets neurally weaved and interfaced into your um, entire system, like it is with mine, I've, I've not been able to disable this. I've talked to you about it, Rebecca. I have been working on things where I've been trying to disengage some of this stuff. I've heard that maybe an EMP blast might knock it out, but it might knock me out with it. So you, what you have to understand is that if I lose consciousness under, under duress of a program like that, something else will take over as a cloned personality. And I guarantee you, this is one of the reasons I haven't pursued that. I don't want to wake up into somebody's altar, okay? Um I don't, I know they've done a lot of tampering in the past with this program and I keep myself very lucid, very aware, very conscious. And even when I rest, you know, it's kind of like the Borg. So, um, technology wise, I would say the, the one thing to blow it out would be universal life force energy insofar as the full light harmonic of ascension waves come in, like they call the galactic waves. I think that has a great force on it to a point where it can disable some of this stuff. Um, but insofar as where I've been with this technology, I have yet to see anything that can disable this stuff because I understand very clearly it's hijacking the zero point within us. Uh, it's not about scalar because scalar is manufactured by man. This is a zero point. We are the zero point. Okay, the soul spirit consciousness, your soul star is a zero point frequency. They interconnect you with their version of a scalar. To some degree, it's a scalar wave. It's a version. It's it's manufactured by man, so it's not the same. So it's hijacking the frequencies of what we are. So as we keep ascending, it's still it's piggybacking off of us. It keeps piggybacking. Uh, but I can tell you point blank, when we do leave this world and the illusion of it won't go with us, it's not able to go with us. And I know that for a fact. But in the meantime, it can create an awful lot of problems while we're here. And I think that for people who get interconnected with these programs, they have to be clear about where they're heading when they leave because I think it can consume them to a point where it might pull them under into a false matrix where they're not able to go home to the full light universe where they come from. And that was a big concern with me when I first got pulled in because I didn't want them pulling me or an aspect of me into their version of whatever matrix they have. Because I can tell you, you know, you know, when you have people say, well, I had you in my dream and you were here and you were there or you were on the ship. I wasn't there. Okay, they're using clones of me if that happens. I'm telling you right now. And I think a lot of people can relate to that because other people have have said, you know, I'm not just talking about myself. Just I, I'm just saying that I think that they're using a cloned version of a projection to communicate with other people, of other people. That's all I'll say about it. But hmm. does that make sense at all? Yeah, it does. Um, I, I, we, I hear that. I've been hearing stuff like that for many years. Like, oh, I, you know, had a dream you were in my house last night with me, blah blah blah, or this or that or another thing. Sometimes I have been, and, and a lot of times I haven't been, and it always made me kind of go, hmm. Right. Okay. One that thing, does, I, yeah. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I just want to say one thing about that disabling technology, which I didn't really cover for a second here, is that we are able to um, remotely try to disable the technology itself. And so far as it doesn't exist off planet, I can tell you right now, there is a set of machine technology. That's not their version. Their version cannot ascend. So what mankind's created here is going to stay here. It's kind of like what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. It's the same thing. It's not going anywhere. But I will tell you, remote viewers or anybody who has a capability, you can zap the hell out of their matrix and it's going down. We're seeing the matrix falling away as we speak. And I've contacted people in the real world on the illusion, which isn't really real, but DC and people like that who are under obligation to disable this stuff. Now, um, because it's been contracted with DARPA and we have new divisions opening up in DARPA right now and Department of Defense, which are literally really digging the sci spy and artificial intelligence interface because they understand very clearly if they can control the mass collective and they can control the brainwaves of every person on this planet simultaneously, they have control over everything. Um, it's, it's better than the, the, you know, think about the old version of mind control back on television sets. Well, this is nothing. Now they can simultaneously pull everybody in. And even the really good psychics are, are like, you have to be careful because you might get swept away into something. You might think it's an extraterrestrial when in fact it's a mock radio signature that's based on a, on a version of an extraterrestrial, but not the real deal. That's concerning as well because I know they've done that with ancestors and voice patterns and people have departed. You know that that that's big been a and I've had people that have talked to me about that and we've I've had conversations about this as well, uh, Slaris, which is, you know, they tell you if you it, it, as a mass sighting or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever the mass sighting may be, 
is like you really have to stop. And and that's one of the things that I try to teach people is how to get past what you see and what you sense on the surface and go behind it, go underneath it, go around it to see mm-hmm. where it really comes from. I call it the point of origin. I love and that. I love that about that, you. Yeah, that, go ahead. And, because that's difficult. That's mm-hmm. difficult because, you know, if you happen, especially empaths, I mean, they're the worst for, for mm-hmm. you know, because they're, 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 they're feeling the power and the energy of, of all these, you know, maybe positive emotions coming up and they're not, they're not thinking for themselves because they're in that moment of just having all of that adrenaline kind of rush go through them as empaths will because they can process way more than most people, but they're also not also in a clear spot in their in their vision in their center of their being um mm-hmm. so there's a way that you can still be an empath without <clears throat> allowing it to overtake you at any Correct. point at time and that's the other thing that i think people need to recognize as well yeah so. i so agree yeah you know there's a certain obviously there are techniques you can use i talk about the unified chakra meditation or the unified field meditation or a bell jar where you're gritting yourselves up um through that's a good way because before i was pulled into this project i was super super empathic beyond clairvoyant clairvoyant clairsentient i was also very empathic to energies and that what that's what made me a very good healer actually but after i was interconnected my sensitivity level changed it's not that i'm not sensitive anymore it's just that i am immune to frequency and I can't feel like I used to anymore. And it's very sad. Uh, it's oh. not anything close to what I was able to do. It's, it's a very, it's like they put something around me that is, I don't know. It's like a different antenna. That's all I can say. Wow. And that is kind of sad. Mm-hmm. And the, the interesting thing though, even, even if you can get back to that point of, of, of getting, you know, somewhat like you were before, it's, you're not going to be like you were before because you're irrevocably changed because of this experience. So even right. your own, your own, your own natural, shall we say, uh, DNA and, uh, energetic field and everything, uh, is, is, will be different because of this experience. So yeah. yeah, there's no going back. I always tell everybody there's no going back. You just keep going forward and you keep ascending and I just keep ascending and I shed skins. Um, I, I shed what I know doesn't belong, you know, um, whether it's through a mind control program or something where they've tried to indoctrinate me into. I keep what I know works. But also what I realize what works is really, you know, the reason that their technology looks so good with me is because I already was I was I was capable of doing that to begin with. All they did was enhance it, and make it look better. Um, so it wasn't anything like I didn't have these gifts already. They were there. They hijacked the gifts and then they they made it look so good that the government, and the military and, and obviously D.C. got involved in it. So. And I'm not just saying it's just me, but I was one of the first people who was pulled into that specific program because they were doing a lot of experimentation with my Merkaba at the time. I noticed there's a question about Dyson Spears in your right yep, here. Yep, yep, and we've yeah. got a follow-up on that. Yeah, so let me read the question for uh, the people that okay. aren't, can't read this. Are Dyson Spears, um, as speculated in astronomy lately, on a solar scale, an AI propaganda thing, or a defense of some sort? And then he has a... or. Purple Fields has a follow-up to that question as well. So go ahead. Okay. Well, I haven't really done much research on the Dyson Spheres myself, to be honest with you guys. So I, I can't tell you offhand. Um, I, I probably wouldn't really be able to give you a plus or a minus as far as whether I, I agree it's propaganda or not. I will say one thing that the, the, we have a big multiverse out there and there's so many different things out there that are, it's all about frequency and energy and consciousness. That's as simple as I can explain it to everybody. That's what Tesla explained. That's what I explained. So I look at it like that in so far as whatever they're trying to do, they're trying to hijack everything when it comes down to energetic signatures, frequencies, even the hologram itself and to create their own version and template of an artificial arena, which is dealing with false realities and false matrices. So that's what's deceiving the masses. I think people should be very careful about UFOs. I think they should be very careful about what they're watching in the sky, what they're seeing. It could be a bleed through of many things. Sometimes it can be the real deal. Sometimes it cannot. Um, it can be something connected to the, the black science department, which is really about trickery because as you and I know, and many of the listeners, when you have interconnection, or not interconnection, but when you have a really con- strong connection to an off world species, for example, our ancestors, there's none of the middlemen in between and there's none of this stuff going on where you have, um, it seems to me like there's, there's too much, uh, what I call psychotronics, um, naturally deployed through, through, through projections and see. what they're seeing out there in the skies i don't believe are, are basically ufos that's my point I, I believe that when you have an intimate relationship with an off-world species it's very intimate in your consciousness and you're able to just interpolate the data yourself without having this 
you don't have to go outside to see these big objects in the sky is my point. So I would say be very careful of things that they're deploying right now. And also now that they're ready for disclosure, and it really sounds like they are getting ready to disclose a few things, um, it seems like they're more comfortable about artificial intelligence. Now, I think they're going to be lying a lot more. So this is one of the reasons I think people should pay attention to your own inner inner compass, as you were saying, your own inner intuition and your celestial compass and not get swept away by what they tell you, because what they're telling you is really not the truth. Uh, I don't care what they show you. I don't care what aliens they're trying to whip out. I'm telling you, point blank, they're going to lie. So they're, able, they're basically able to create anything at this point in the continuum. Anything can happen. Anything can be created. I know. It's really sad. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, as a follow up. Um, for from purple fields mm-hmm. if the mind is silent is that a defense against ai um, I'm, I'm assuming that he's that they're talking about when you can get into that space right. of no space well um, i my mind was blissfully quiet like a zen master before they interconnected me and then they had hit me with the noise and the live feed real-time communication i can tell you that when you're being interfaced if you remain silent um it might help you not get interconnected as much i was on i'm a big mouth okay and I'm a, <laughs> and as, a, as a telepath, I wasn't about to let these people dominate me. So I naturally pushed them back. That was my natural um, personality to do such a thing. And that, with the more I pushed back, the more they interconnected me. OK, that was the, that was kind of like the, the bait. So I will tell you that if you do get pulled into something where you're hearing something in communication, and you're constantly in communication back with it. It gets stronger the more you communicate with it. There's no doubt about it. Your telepathy gets stronger, but so does it. And if you're just one of these people who are in your own bliss and silence, stay there. Do not go out and, and don't worry about getting um, all these other transmissions coming in because when you receive full light harmonic transmission, it comes in as a frequency and a wave and you interpolate the data through your higher self, over soul and superconscious. You don't need a middleman. What I've noticed with this artificial intelligence program is that it is the middleman. It's like something that wants to sit there and reanimate you and recreate a sentence for you and do this for you and do that for you and mess up everything that's coming in from spirit, from spirit or source. It's just completely a messed up situation. So I hope that answered the question a little bit. I think so. And then um, the next question is, please explain spiritual signature. How can we know our own? This, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. Well, your spiritual signature is your, is your full light, what I call your vibrational frequency and signature. Everybody has a unique brainwave template, but they also have a frequency associated with their vibration at the soul spirit consciousness level. And that is something that you are you have before you show up on the timeline here. It's, it's what you bring from the cosmic design and you integrate onto this world as you walk this world. So that can't be tainted. And that's why I say, you know, pay attention to that frequency. Always, always connect into what we call the higher self over soul superconscious, which is part of that frequency. So that is part of your spiritual uh, frequency and signature. And, and sometimes you may not be in tune with it as far as being able to feel it, but it's there and other people can feel it as well. Um, for example, when I was pulled into the Cobra program, my friends knew my frequency beforehand. They knew my high vibrational frequency and signature. And afterwards, they just they said, where did it go? Where's your frequency? And it was so cloaked. It was so scrambled. Um, so, so just to give you an idea, but you have a unique, beautiful vibration. Everybody does. Uh, keep it strong. Keep the signature strong. And the more you actually work on yourself, the higher in fre- the higher the frequency gets and the more in tune it gets to what we call your soul star, your higher self. And that's the whole idea behind doing the spiritual work is to, is to harmonize with your higher self and those upper dimensional grid works opposed to the coarse energies of the lower astral or the coarse energies of what's here because we can polarize so easily with those energies. Oh, and that is that is beautifully said. That is absolutely beautifully said, uh, Solaris. You know, uh, one of the things that I I say to people so that they understand um, their their signature, their I call it an energy signature, um, which is a spiritual signature. Um, when we're born uh, on this planet, when when we when we come into this body into this planet, um, everybody has an astrological uh, moment where the stars and the Everything lines up and it says, this is when you were born. And there's nobody that's going to be born in the exact same space and place and time as you in that moment. Mm -hmm. You can have many babies born across the globe at the same time, but they're also their geography, uh, their lineage, um, their whatever they brought in with them, their whole DNA, all of their memories, all of that is what makes it it, different from every other baby born at that same exact moment in time on this globe. Mm -hmm. And it's also the space in which you're in. I don't care if if there's somebody that's 10 feet away from you and they're having a baby at the same time that you're having a baby, they're going to be different. Their energy signatures are going to be different. Mm -hmm. Everyone has it. And it's learning how to 
uh, understand your own self and how you vibrate. It's finding the truth. And one of the things that I say a lot is learning what your authentic self is. No right. one can do that work for you but you. Very well said indeed, and I totally agree with that. Yeah, I always like to call it a singular consciousness merged with source because that's what we are. Even though everybody likes to pretend we're cookie cutters and we're all the same. No, we're not all the same. We're very unique and individual. And that's what's so so interesting about what they're trying to do when they try to brainwash a mass collective because we it's, it's impossible to do that, really. I mean, at some point, the continuum is going to implode because it just doesn't work in the cosmic design it's like a different frequency or harmonic for a song everybody has to have a different frequency everyone has a different harmonic associated so yeah i agree with you on that i think that's very well said well and it just goes with what you've been saying about you know finding their their own path because it's Mm -hmm. not that you can't get help from somebody some you know ideas or indications or you know some insight but the work itself has to be done by the individual Yep. Um, and, and if one thing doesn't work, then you try another. And the interesting thing I think about the times that we're living in is that, it, it, first of all, is the energies are just really, wow, they're off the <laughs> charts. Yeah. Especially these last few weeks have been off the charts, right? Yeah, it's been and bizarre. It has. It's been, you know, and it, it, I say that every week, but I'm telling you, these last two weeks, I, I, have, I have not been on such a roller coaster ride. I really have not. Really? And yeah, and learning how to, um, and I, I think if I was not as far advanced as I am, and I'm not saying that I'm that far advanced, but if I wasn't aware of these, this, this ride itself, I probably would have just, you know, run babbling out in the middle of the street somewhere. I'm telling you. Yeah, well, it's a busy universe, multiverse, and then they're making it busier by what they're doing here with technology. So it does oh. get pretty strange. But yeah, you're, you're strong enough to ride those waves. I know you're very, very powerful, and I know I'm a very powerful being too. Yes. We're not saying this with ego. I'm sure the listeners are too. But I'm just saying that we're able to. This is the whole idea behind ascension: calibrating your frequency so that you're able to run with multidimensional light waves, but also yes. just navigate through those tides. I mean, you can, you you have the capability. We come from these locations in the cosmic design. It's not like we we have to relearn this. We just have to surrender. What I call surrender to the streams of creation in order to to accept what's happening at a higher level of consciousness. It's when we get derailed into the main of man that we really start losing control um, because there is no control there is chaos in motion where we gain control is really just allowing for source to integrate us with our higher self into the cosmic design that's the way i see it anyway and and i'm pretty anchored and grounded like i said i i don't feel a whole lot these days i'm i was i was in i did a tea, a tai chi class just the other day and I, everybody's getting really high and lightheaded and i don't feel a thing okay i don't feel anything um i feel really good and fortified and strong but i don't i don't feel anything so Emotionally, you, know, you feel nothing. You don't feel energetic. I don't feel any energetic yeah. things at all. But I know that my energy's solid. You know, it's just that what affects most people doesn't affect me. And I've right. noticed this more and more. And I don't know how how you all are, but I do know that that's happened more and more with my life right now. And I think that for for you, I think that may be a good thing. I mean, for the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, I'm pretty grounded with... anyway. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And plus, where I've been with, the, I think the fact that I've been able to ride the technology the way I have. Is probably why I'm so grounded. I'm just, you know, you have to be grounded to ride that kind of technology. You can't be a flake with it. And that's one of the things. You know. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. You have to be present. Mm-hmm. You have to be the yep. sacred witness. Yep. 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 And you have to be aware of your own self and mm-hmm. how you are functioning in whatever space you're in. You know, I have to tell something that's very important. When I was being pulled into that program and they were modulating me, I remember um, him saying, and that was Michael, that's her, that's not her, that's her, that's not her. He was modulating my wave. And it was interesting because he was trying to create some separate signature as he was mapping me into this program. And it was just like, I'll never forget him doing that. And it's some of the things I remember very, very clearly because these guys are insidious when they're trying to map your, your vibrational frequency and signature and trying to create their own version or copy or replication of you. And that's why I wonder about clones and I wonder about how many of us have been cloned through a program of some kind that we probably don't even know about. Well, you not know, to change the it, subject, but I was just saying. Oh, just no, no, no. No, that's actually, that's, that's not changing the subject. That's really right on point because that's part of what we were talking about. Um, okay, let's see. Um, we have another one here, uh, again, from Purple Fields. Um, very good questions, by the way. Yeah, I like um, that name. Good name. I know, it's Purple. cool, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, most of us has a sense of spiritual guidance. 
can we get to know our own default frequency or signature state and develop from that contact independent from the particular guidance? I would say so. I mean, it sounds like you're talking about a split consciousness to some degree or that person. Um, I, w- I would say that's possible. Um, you know, let me look at this again here. So your default frequency, we were talking about a default frequency or signature state that, well, you always have your original frequency signature that's there. Uh, we do get static on our electromagnetic fields and auras and four body systems from atmospheric conditions, emotional body relationship issues, et cetera, and things like that. So that can contaminate, but you'll always have that benchmark of your frequency. I can, I can tell you, yes, you can do that. And, and some of the keys to really understanding that aspect of yourself or that frequency is literally going into self through toning, harmonics, meditation, affirmations, and a diligent um, committed lifestyle to to really being connected to what we call the frequency of your spirit. And that takes work. It's like this is what you were talking about, Rebecca. It's not like you just sit every day and say, oh, well, I just want my frequency to change. You've got to do it. You know, you've got to do the spiritual work. You've got to do everything. You've got to look at yourself. You've got to shadow yourself. You've got to go through meditations, which isn't a, I mean, I like affirmations and meditations. I used to love to meditate, my unified chakra meditations. Toning is fabulous. Healing work is really good. You know, if you can't heal yourself, get somebody to work on you you can trust. All these things are helping you along the way. I always like that saying, we're walking each other home because we are, it's like star people. We all have our hands joined and we're all star people. We're walking each other home back to the stars, the cosmos. We're reminding each other of our divinity. We're reminding each other that we're here in a false matrix. We're reminding each other what we're, that we are the extraterrestrials we seek. We are the star people and we have to have, um, that awakening because it's very important that people start understanding that mirror between mirrors because all this stuff that we've been experiencing here on this timeline has been a false matrix. And the reason that I talk about the artificial intelligence is because I've been through it and I can tell you it, it breaks my heart to know that there's this kind of evil program out there. It doesn't do good things for people. It really, you know, you, it, on, a, on a military level, okay, yeah, it's great for sci spy, it's great for military, it's great for this. It's all about weaponization. But when it comes down to the soul, the spirit, consciousness, your essence of origin, your light body, your Merkaba, who you are as a multiversal being, the sacredness of the silence of your brain and your soul and your spirit, it doesn't honor any of those things. It doesn't like that. I would say it almost hates it. I would have to say that it almost hates source. It hates creation. Okay, It hates bliss. This is something that is an adversary to the light in a very, very bad way. Um, I've never seen anything like it in my life, but anything that's ascended in consciousness, it doesn't want. And that was a construct created by mankind. You know, you can call it whatever you want. Some people like to call it the Satan um, there is a program called Satan, by the way. It's an acronym over there in, uh, in Project Soul Catcher Volume 2. Robert Duncan, who is actually one of the de- developers of some of the psychotronic programs, talks about these these acronyms they use for specific covert warfare programs. And that was one of them. There was another one, too, that was called uh, Connected to the Jesus Factor. It's like a, a Christ Resurrection one. So they run these programs, and all of them are based on religion or indoctrination to steer you away from spirit. Because there is no religion in the cosmic design. We use spirit and consciousness. We don't use indoctrination programming. And so once again, I'm on my soapbox, but I'm, I'm telling you that's it, people have to kind of deprogram from the world here. This world is not supposed to be running this way. These guys are rogue here. What they've been doing to us is rogue. This is not okay. And thank goodness there are star people here. And I consider you all star people. If you're listening to this show and you follow Rebecca, you're definitely star people, just like JP. We're Thank goodness we're here. We may not think we're doing anything, but I, I guarantee you we are. I guarantee you we are. So, wow, honey, that was, uh, that was beautiful. Oh my God, that was beautiful. Sad. Uh, thank, you. thank you for that. No, honestly, I was getting all the good willies and everything. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> I love you. You're a sweetheart. And I love JP too. I know he's back there. I love you, JP. Oh, thank Solaris, you. thank you so much. Uh, it touched me. Um, <laughs> the, yeah. the, you know, when it, you said uh, we're all walking each other home, uh, that yes, touched me. It was beautiful. True. Thank it, you. It's it, true. It, it is true. It is true. And, and and what a beautiful reminder for all of us. Seriously, that was a beautiful reminder. And that's why we're here. And Purple Fields, I know that many of you don't have p- other people to talk with. But, you know, um, there's times when we have offered, um, you know, uh, places for you to go. Um, you're, you're always welcome to contact people, um, especially through through my website. You can always contact me. Uh, I have all my emails are up there. If you have any questions, I'm sure that there are other people that will uh, obviously ha- volunteer as well. So there there are people that are listening here with you tonight and listening to Solaris. Um, there, there are people here that can help you and talk with you um, and give you some guidance um, as as we all are. Because like she said, we're all here. 
helping each other home. We yeah, are. we're we're not um we're not alone. We've never been alone. Even when we think we're alone, we're not alone. And I can tell you, even when I was pulled into that program, I surrendered to a source immediately. I didn't know what else to do but hold on for the ride. And I know I was yeah. protected by divine forces. I don't think I would be alive today had I not been protected by divine forces that were there coming from whatever sector in the multiverse, you know, whatever beings were there. There was all that. And I will say one thing, Rebecca, and most people I'm sure are familiar. You, you do fabulous work. I, I was um, I was actually privileged enough to do a little a bit of an exchange with you and a trade. And I, I have to say, you're phenomenal in the work you do. Um, you helped me so much in that that brief moment in the illusion of space and time where you communicated your data. So I want to thank you. She is brilliant. And I would say, if you want a session, I highly recommend Rebecca. Highly recommend her. I trust her completely. Wow, wow. aren't you beautiful? Listen, you guys. Well, uh, it's break time. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be back at the top of the hour with more of Solaris Blue Raven. Absolutely beautiful soul. Thank you all. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 